excitement of the unexpected. An endless yearning. Lies beyond the everyday. Global music sensations take the Yamaba Theater stage this November. Like Andrea Bocelli, November 1st. Mariah Carey, November 6th. And Jonas Brothers, November 10th. Tickets on sale now at yamabatheater.com. Must be 21 to enter. Soft on crime politicians like George Gascon make our communities less safe. Crime has skyrocketed since Gascon eliminated cash bail, putting violent criminals back on our streets. What's worse, George Whitesides stands with him, funding Gascon's campaign and pushing the same dangerous policies. Whitesides supports ending cash bail, even if the criminals committed domestic violence. George Gascon and George Whitesides, their extreme policies put our families in danger. I'm Mike Garcia, and I approve this message. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. Excessive heat today raising fire danger across Southern California this morning. Firefighters rushed to put out flames that spread quickly near Castaic Lake. More on the aggressive approach they used to keep this fire from burning out of control. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carlos Serrera. Beverly Hills Police this morning is set to increase patrols around synagogues uh, for Rosh Hashanah. All of it, they're raising conflict going on in the Middle East. I'll have a live report coming up next. I'm Eric Spillman. The vice presidential nominees hold a polite and civil debate, but there was one part where their microphones were cut off. That plus other highlights uh, coming up. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. Customers uh, nationwide have weighed in. See which convenience store chain has been crowned the best in the country. Good morning, I'm Jeremy Parsons. Maria Bakalova from the new movie The Apprentice joins us live right here in studio to tell us all about that film. Gaga with a big night on Kimmel. We have highlights and a ticket giveaway. Your chance to go see the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. All that just ahead. I don't know, when I think about the uh, Trans-Siberian uh, Orchestra, I always think around Christmas time and that sort of stuff. And here we are rolling out a forecast for you that includes temperatures of 114 and in many areas above 100. 77 coastal, downtown Los Angeles, 90. 114 will be the daytime high in the San Fernando Valley. High desert, 104, 106 inland empire and the Orange County inland up to 91 degrees. Ginger with traffic. Yeah, I'm just looking at something taking place in Orange County, so we'll get to that in just a second. The 605 northbound side at the 60. They're talking about this type with three cars in the right lane. And then on the 60 westbound side at Crossroads Parkway, there's something there as well. So all around, this is a busy ride. 605 north at the 60, 60 westbound side at Crossroads. Here's the thing that I was looking at in Orange County. I mean, everything really looks like it's filled in. Even for that 22, oftentimes it's busy at about Harbor Boulevard. To me, those delays from well before you get to Beach Boulevard. But now there's a request for the CHP to provide traffic control for this five southbound side of Gene Autry Way. And that's because there is something sitting in lanes. Hopefully they'll get this one taken care of. Let's see what that five is doing. Oh yeah, that does look like a busy ride. Delays extending on just before you get to that 91 split. We'll watch and keep our eyes on all these things popping up and making a mess of your Wednesday commute. I'll send it back to you, Frank. Ginger, thank you. The first and only vice presidential debate was held last night. Both candidates remain mostly civil. It'll most likely be the last debate before the election, which is now only 34 days away. KTLA's Eric Spillman, live in the newsroom with more. Eric, good morning. Morning, Frank. Both J.D. Vance and Tim Walls come from the Midwest, so they were what you might call Midwestern nice during the debate. They did not attack each other very much. Instead, each went after the other candidate's running mate. At the beginning, Senator Vance and Minnesota Governor Walls shook hands, and then before too long, the two were discussing one of the biggest issues that divides the two campaigns, abortion rights. Donald Trump has been very clear that on the abortion policy specifically, that we have a big country and it's diverse. And California has a different viewpoint on this than Georgia. Georgia has a different viewpoint from Arizona. And the proper way to handle this, as messy as democracy sometimes is, is to let voters make these decisions, let the individual states make their abortion policy. Well, let me tell you about this idea that there's diverse states. There's a young woman named Amber Thurman. She happened to be in Georgia, a restrictive state. Because of that, she had to travel a long distance to North Carolina to try and get her care. Amber Thurman died in that journey back and forth. The fact of the matter is, how can we as a nation 
say that your life and your rights, as basic as the right to control your own body, is determined on geography. The 2020 election and its aftermath was also a topic that came up. J.D. Vance had no answer for the basic question, did Trump lose that election? This is one that we are miles apart on. This was a threat to our democracy in a way that we had not seen. And it manifested itself because of Donald Trump's inability to say. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she? It's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. On the subject of immigration, there was a discussion about what's happening in Springfield, Ohio. Vance did not bring up his debunked claim that Haitian migrants are eating dogs and cats. But he did say illegal immigrants there are overwhelming schools, hospitals, and the housing market. When a moderator pointed out that those migrants are in this country, in Springfield, Ohio, legally, Vance objected. I would like Democrats and Republicans to both... Thank Margaret, you. The, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check, and since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app, where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole, and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card, and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our you, own. Senator. Senator, for leadership. describing the legal process. We have so much to get to, Senator. Those laws have, 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 have been much. on the books since 1990. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, the the, the CBP One have... app has not been on the books it's since 1990. It's something that Kamala Harris created for it. Gentlemen, you're, the audience can't hear you because your mics are cut. It's hard to tell how much this debate will affect voters' decisions. In past elections, the vice presidential debate has not had a big impact. Both men last night followed the cardinal rule for VPs, don't say anything that will embarrass your running mate. Jessica? Okay, Eric, thank you for that. Synagogues in Los Angeles will have extra security ahead of Rosh Hashanah later today. The precautionary measure is in response to growing tensions in the Middle East. KTLA's Carlos Herrera live now in Beverly Hills with more on that. Carlos, good morning. Hi, Jessica. Good morning. And the Beverly Hills Police Department actually joining other agencies in Southern California to beef up security at local synagogues like this one here in Beverly Hills and other places of worship for the Rosh Hashanah holiday. Officials say they had this plan in place already, but of course the urgency increased Tuesday when Iran launched missile strikes against Israel. Tensions and fears of a regional war increased in the Middle East. Explosions were heard and a fire and smoke were visible along the Beirut skyline early Wednesday as the Israeli military was striking the Lebanese militant Hezbollah group as Israel intensifies its ground operation. Fighting between both groups has also intensified on the ground in the Lebanese capital. The Hezbollah militia said its firefighters killed and wounded an unknown number of Israeli soldiers who tried crossing deeper into Lebanon. جهانی رو سر جاش بنشونم که دست از این کاراش ور داره چون اگه بخواد ادامه بده Iran's president there saying or warning rather that his country could give Israel a quote far stronger response if the country continues its military operations in Lebanon. He referred to Israel as a criminal and called on the U.S. and European countries to put it in its rightful place saying that the Middle East, Middle East rather has moved closer to a long feared regional war. It comes a day after Iran launched nearly 200 missiles into the Jewish state lighting up the skies over Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Israel's Iron Dome air defense system intercepted most of them, but some landed in central and southern Israel, damaging some of the country's military bases and buildings like schools and apartments. Workers were seen clearing debris just a day before the start of Rosh Hashanah. Millions of residents are still being told to stay near bomb shelters, avoid any unnecessary travel 
or outdoor activities. Iran says it fired those missiles as retaliation for attacks that killed leaders of Iran-backed groups Hezbollah and Hamas and a commander with the Iranian military. But Israel says Iran's attack will not go unpunished. Let me be very clear. We will defend our people. We will act. Iran